worship you. We magnify you. We lift you up in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you are worthy, oh God. You are mighty. You are true. You are faithful. And we lift you up, oh God. We magnify you, oh God. We desire you in this house, oh God. Your word says you inhabit the praises of your people, oh God. So we couldn't enter to your gates with thanksgiving. And we enter into your courts with praise. We shout out hallelujah. We shout out thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, we glorify you, O oh God. For we know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For we know that you are Alpha and Omega, O oh God. You are the beginning and the end, O oh God. You are a great and terrible God, O oh God. For where your presence is, O oh God, the enemy has to surrender, O oh God. So we yield ourselves up to you, O oh God. We bless your holy name in this house, O oh God. We desire to have you today, O oh God. We want you to reign in this atmosphere, O oh God. As we lift up our atmosphere of praise unto you, O oh God. We ask that you examine our hearts and our minds. Anything that is not pleasing in your sight, O oh God. We ask that you remove it right now, O oh God. We declare and decree that we will be victorious in our praise, O oh God. We declare and decree that we will be free to worship you, O oh God. We lay aside every weight. We lay aside every uh, uh, problem, O oh God. We lay aside every circumstance, O oh God. We put it at your feet, O oh God. And we come to offer it unto you, O oh God. A sacrifice of praise, O oh God. We press in your presence today, O oh God. We press in your presence today, O oh God. We long for you, O oh God. For you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, O oh God. You're Jehovah Shalom, O oh God. You are our peace, O oh God. You're Jehovah Rapha, O oh God. You are our healer, Lord God. And we glorify you today, O oh God. We magnify you, O oh God. We bless your name in this house, O oh God. And we declare and decree, O oh God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, O oh God. Because we will praise you, O oh God. We will lift you up, O oh God. We will lift up an atmosphere of praise in this house. Come on, people of God. Let's bless the name of the Lord in this house. Hallelujah. Let's fill this place with praise. Hallelujah, Lord God. We glorify you, O oh God. We long for you, O oh God. We desire to have you, O oh God. We want nobody but you, O oh God. We ask that you forgive us, O oh God, for not coming with the right heart and mindset, O oh God. When we entered into this house today, O oh God, we ask for your forgiveness, O oh God. When we did not enter in, O oh God, with a praise on our lips, O oh God, we ask for your forgiveness, O oh God, because we had heart hatred in our hearts towards your people, O oh God. We ask that you remove those things, O oh God. You said if we confess our faults, you are faithful and just to forgive, O oh God. So we ask for forgiveness right now, O oh God. We confess that we're sinful nature, O oh God. We just want you to forgive us, O oh God, so that we can dwell in your presence today, O oh God. We want to sit at your feet, O oh God. We want to commune with you, O oh God. We want to bask in your presence today, O oh God. We want you to fill this place, O oh God. Fill this atmosphere, O oh God, to destroy the yokes of the enemy off of the minds of your people, oh God, to heal the brokenhearted, oh God, to comfort those who are comforted, oh God. We ask that you come into this house, oh God. We just want to rest at your feet, oh God. We rebuke the enemy right now, oh God. Thank the Lord, rebuke you, and the blood of Jesus is against you. We come against everything that you stand for, not by our might, not by our power, but by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. We declare this is a house of prayer. We declare this is a house of praise. We declare that this is a house of worship. And we will worship our God. We will praise our God. And we will not give you victory, Satan. We tear down every stronghold of the enemy by the prayers of our praise, oh God. But we know that we are more than conquerors in him who lives within us, oh God. So we bless you today, oh God. We glorify you today, oh God. We want you to fill this house, oh God. Touch each and every heart and mind right now, oh God. I don't know what the people are dealing with today, oh God. We, we want you to fill this place, oh God. We want you to fill this place, oh God. Fill our hearts right now, oh God. Touch our minds right now, oh God. We lift up our hands in worship to you, oh God. We surrender like an infant to their parent, oh God. We want you, oh God. As a dear pen of the water, Lord God. Our soul desires you, oh God. We thirst for you, oh God. We thirst for you, oh God. Quench us with a fiery liquid, liquid of your water, oh God. Let us drink from the well that never runs dry, oh God. We want you today, oh God. We want you today, oh God. Quench our thirst today, oh God. Touch our hearts and our minds, oh God. We'll forever give you the glory, oh God. We ask that you touch our pastor today, oh God. Touch Bishop Robinson, the great that you can never touch him before, oh God. Elevate him in another level in you, oh God. Take him to a higher realm in you, oh God. We come against every attack of the enemy on his life right now, oh God. Every attack over the word that you have set forth 
for the people to hear again. We come against every attack right now, oh God. We ask that you touch the ears of the ear gates of the people today. Touch their eye gates today, oh God. We ask that you fill up any cracks, oh God, that's preventing the enemy, that's preventing the people from hearing your word because of the attacks of the enemy right now, oh God. We declare you to be a king of kings. We declare you to be almighty, oh God. We declare you to be the righteous one, oh God. We bless your name, oh God. We glorify you, hallelujah. Come on, people of God. Let's lift up a praise in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify you. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name in this house, oh God. We glorify you in this house, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We know that that's the highest praise, oh God. And we want you and nobody but you, oh God. So we say, fill this house with your praise, oh God. We lift up a praise in this atmosphere, oh God. We fill this place with a praise in this atmosphere, oh God. Father God, but we know that if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you, oh God. So we lift up your holy name. But you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end, oh God. You are the great comforter, oh God. You are a wonderful counselor, oh God. You are the Prince of Peace, oh God. You are our everlasting Father. And we bless your name, oh God. We glorify you. We magnify you. Oh, we glorify you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bow down in your presence for you are worthy, oh God. We bow down in your presence for you are worthy, oh God. Oh, there's nobody like you, oh God. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Y'all come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can we ask you all to stand? Amen. For the reading of the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to be coming from Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. 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 He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I put my trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare and the fowler and from the northern pestilence. He shall cover thee with thy feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou should not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but nigh shall come near thee only only ha, this is where you can give a praise break ha, only ha, only ha, shall you see ha, with your eyes ha, hallelujah ha, hallelujah ha. can y'all just give him a praise ha, for being ha, your shield ha, your buckler ha, your strong tower ha, your righteousness ha. he's everything ha, that we need ha, hallelujah ha. Hallelujah, ha, glory to God, ha, but it shall not come, ha, not thee, ha, only with thine eyes, ha, shall thou behold, ha, and see the reward, ha, of the wicked, ha, because thou hast made the Lord, ha, who is, ha, your refuge, ha, even the most high, ha, thy habitations, ha, they shall never, ha, befall thee, ha, neither, ha, shall any plague, ha, come near thy dwelling, ha, for he shall give his angels uh, charge over thee uh, to keep thee in all of thy ways. Uh, they will bear you up uh, with thy hand, uh, lest uh, you dash your foot against the stone. Uh, hallelujah! Uh, the young lion uh, and the dragon, uh, thou shalt trample uh, under feet, uh, because he has set his love uh, upon me. Uh, 
therefore uh, will I deliver him uh, therefore uh, because she said to love on him uh, he said I'll deliver you uh, hallelujah uh, says the spirit of living God
Jesus, just call him Jesus. Come on, just call him Jesus. Come on, let's call him till he hears us. Come on, call him till you feel it. Call him till chains be broken. Call him till minds be regulated. Call him till your family get off drugs. Call him till money hits your pocket. Call him till you get set free. Come on, call him till you get delivered. Come on, call him till you get healed. Call him Jesus. Saints used to say, the more I call them, the better I feel. I don't know about you all, just at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. It's virtual time. Songwriter says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, sing with me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's just Savior. He saved, he saved, he saved. Come on, y'all. He saved, he saved, he saved. Come on. Who is he to you? Saved, he saved, he saved. What's his name? His name is Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. He's your master. Master, master, master. Oh. Master, master, master. Yes, he is. He's your master, master, master. Yeah. And what's his name? Jesus. Jesus. When you're sick in your body, he's your healer, healer. Yeah. Is he your healer, healer, healer? Oh, he's your healer, healer, healer. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. We have nothing else. He's your provider, provider, provider. provider. He's your provider, provider, provider. 
welcome. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad to see you. And to our virtual audience, we want you to know that we love you. We thank you all for tuning in to this 11 o'clock hour like you do every Sunday. You've liked, you've shared. We see you checking in from, from Tennessee. We see you checking in from Texas. We see you checking in from Minnesota. But this is what I need you to do. I need you to pull out your devices right now real quick. Pull out your cell phones, your way of communication, and I need you to go to your Facebook page, and I need you to check in right where you are. Amen. We need the world to know that we are at New Hope this morning. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And even online, I need you to check in. I need you to like, share, tag, heart, but most importantly, I need you to connect with this ministry. Amen. Come on. And when you're going to use the hashtag rebuild. Amen. Come on, we're still in that season of rebuilding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you're done it, I need everybody to sign to just put your hands together and bless God right there. Amen. Come on, you all are welcome. On behalf of our bishop and our first lady, we love you all. We thank you all for coming. And listen, invite someone next week. Amen. Make your car a transportation to get somebody here. Yes. If you have empty seats in your car, fill them up. And bring somebody to the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Listen, can we just, right where we are, just stand to our feet. And lift our hands. And begin to tell God something good about how he is to you. It wasn't your alarm clock that got you up. It was the touch from God that woke you up this morning. Come on, begin to talk to God. Tell him how good he's been. Tell him how kind he's been. Tell him how awesome he is. And if it had not been for him on our side, where would we be? So in this moment, God, we just say thank you.
Come on, lift your hands and just tell him he lifted. Come on, lift your hands and just tell him we lay. to sing that until you meet whatever you're doing in the sanctuary you need to pause and say that to God right now I want to see the sound ministry with their hands lifted I want to see deacons and mothers and ushers with the sound tell them I wonder who means that and submit yourself. Nope, nope, that's your hands. I said open your mouth. Open your mouth. Father, we bless your name. Come on. Come on. We submit to your will. We submit. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Don't tell my mind you shy. Come on. We submit ourselves to your will this morning. We submit our... Oh, We submit ourselves to your will this morning. We lay our crowns. It represents our authority. We lay it to the side and bless and worship your name. Come on. Come on. Take a few minutes and do that. Everybody watching us online, come on. Lay your crown down this morning. Come on. Lay your crown down this morning. You might be the leader in your house, but he's gone. Come on. 
You might be the boss on your job, but he's God. You might be mama, you might be daddy, but he's God. Lay your crown down this morning and worship him. Come out of yourself. Let your pride go and worship, 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 worship. That's it. Come on, out of your mouth. Out of your, you got to press to another place. Come on, we got to press to another place. We got to press to another place. Hallelujah. We lay down our crowns. And we worship you. Just a few more minutes with your hands lifted. I'm waiting on your mouth to fill the room. Your words to fill this room. You got to have stamina in worship. You got to make your flesh obey you. Your flesh will tell you your hands are tired. Put them down. You tell your flesh, I don't submit to you. You submit to me. Your flesh will tell you that's enough. You don't have nothing else to say. You tell your flesh, God's been too good to me. Come on, worship, worship, worship. Feel this room. I need to hear more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you this morning, God. We love you this morning. We love you this morning. We love you this morning. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. Hallelujah. I want you, if you can, to move out of your seat. And I just want you to go to somebody on the other side of the sanctuary. Come on. Go to other somebody on the other side of the sanctuary. Move. And I want you, if you feel... If you... If you feel safe... I want you to just embrace them and I want you to just tell them something supernatural is going to happen for you this morning. Come on, tell them something supernatural. Somebody make sure they can still hear us on live. Something supernatural is getting ready to happen for you this morning. status aside so that you can be lifted in my life I'll trade in everything I think that I've gained in this life for you to be lifted for you to be lifted for you to be lifted I don't need to be noticed I need you to be lifted I don't need to be recognized I need you to be lifted. Hallelujah. 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 Let's get our Bibles in our hands and get to work this morning. Let's get our Bibles in our hands and get to work this morning. Thank you, praise team, for ushering us into another place. Let's get our Bibles in our hands and let's get to work. What a prophetic moment based upon the message that God has given us on today. I'm excited. I know now this will be a series, at least two parts, because I don't believe I will be shocked if I get to finish this on this morning because there's so much that God has given me. Are y'all praying for me? I think sometimes we come in and we assume that Bishop got a word, he all right. I need him to preach to me, but I need you to pray for me because you don't know what I had to deal with before I got here. 
Amen. And I'm praying now that God would move on your behalf. I want to thank God for Pastor Kiwin who preached a mighty word on last Sunday. And we're getting him ready. I told y'all a long time ago, y'all have to bear with me. My job is to train leaders. I'm getting him ready for him to go out. And so when I give him certain tasks on purpose, you know I'm preparing him for something greater. And this is what you're a part of. This is the commission that God has given me, the demand that is on my life. And uh, there are a few things that are going to have to be a little different because of what I have to do. Psalms 24, Psalms 24. Psalms 24. I am not a tremendously heavy psalm preacher. I, I don't, I preach the whole Bible. I go where God tells me to go. But I, I don't spend a lot of time for whatever reason in the book of Psalm. But God has brought me here and this message has been ringing in my spirit for some time now. We're going to Psalm number 24. Verse number one, when you get it, say, I got it. Here readeth the word of the Lord. The earth is the Lord's. <laughs> and the fullness thereof. The world, they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let's go back before verse number one because I'm going to spend a lot of time preaching about David <laughs> it's a psalm of David let's start there I don't know what your phone says but in my Bible it says a psalm of David somebody say a psalm of David that's important because we're going to spend a lot of time talking about David he writes let's make that clear in Psalm 24 the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Who's writing this is important. The world, they that dwell therein, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitful, deceitfully he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from God of his salvation this is the generation of them that seek him that seek thy face O Jacob the word Salah means pause and meditate on that let's finish lift up your heads <laughs> O ye gates and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Notice how he's about to go. And the king of glory shall come in. To some, this seems broken up, but he actually starts off in verse 1 talking about the king. He, he wants you to know the earth belongs to him. And if you lift up your heads, the king shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Notice he's not talking about people or talking to people. We use this to tell people to lift up their heads. But David is writing for the gates to lift up their heads. Even lift them up. Ye everlasting doors. He's talking to gates and doors, not people. Y'all gonna talk back to me? And what's going to happen? The, if you lift up the, your heads, gates and doors, the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory pause <laughs> and meditate on this I want you to notice once you get past verse number 6 he starts off in verse 1 telling us about this king but he just doesn't call him the king he calls him the Lord the earth belongs to the Lord 
he is establishing possession. Once he gets to verse number seven, he's talking to the gates and the doors and tells them to lift up their heads. And then there is a theme from verse seven down to verse 10. Did y'all catch the theme? The thing is he keeps talking about the king. The king, if you lift up your heads, the king's going to come in. Okay, well, who is the king? The Lord of hosts, the, long, the Lord strong in battle. He is what? He's the king. Lift up your head, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, even ye everlasting doors. What's going to happen? The king! He's going to come in. I want to talk for just a few minutes and probably for the next couple of weeks at least from this thought, the game of thrones. The game of thrones. You, you see all throughout scripture spiritual battles and even natural battles over thrones stay with me please spirit battles and natural battles and understand that what is happening in the natural is just manifestation of what's happening in the spirit realm. So when you see natural battles over thrones, it is a representation and a manifestation of what's really going on in the spirit realm. And you won't, would not have thrones if God hadn't created the throne. The throne is an elevated seat, an elevated place that is made for royalty, specifically for kings. And in the absence of a king, it is for princes and queens and princesses. It is for the royal line, first for the king, and then for his offspring in the absence of the king. Whether you know it or not, there has been a battle in your life from the time you were born to see who will sit on the throne of your life. There, there, there has been spiritual warfare, even now as I'm preaching, <laughs> to find out who gets the elevated seat in your life. Who, who's going to have rule and who's going to have reign. Because when you are under a kingdom, you and your entire family are under the reign of the king. So you have to teach your children the ways of the kingdom. Because if you grow up and you submit to the king, but your child does not follow the ways of the king, your child has committed treason. So it is not just for us to submit to the king, but we must teach our family the ways of kingdomship. Helping them understand that there is a battle in your life over who will sit on the elevated seats in your life. And you need to know that the spirit warfare the spiritual warfare that you feel in your life is really over who you gonna let sit on the throne of your life. Who, who, who's going to have ultimate authority in your life? Who, who are you going to let come in and reign and rule in your life? I stood in this very pulpit 
about 14 days before the queen died. And I talked to y'all about kingdoms. I told you all that the queen was the last living real monarch that existed in the earth realm. And I told you that even though she reigned, she did not have absolute rule. The last real sovereign king was King James, the one who is responsible for your transliteration of the current King James Bible. He was the last one that had absolute reign or they gave absolute reign to in, in the kingdom of England. Once the queen passed several days later, those of you who have an ear to the spirit realm should have known something is shifting in the atmosphere. And the Lord will not leave me alone concerning kingship, concerning kingdom, because it is so important to him that his people make decisions on who's going to be on the throne in your life. When you look all throughout scripture, y'all not falling asleep on me, are y'all? When you look all throughout scripture, you will find how important kings are to God and how important kings are to his people. You see Israel's king, the first king that Israel had. Come on, Bible readers, can we do this together? The first king Israel had, do y'all remember his name? The first king Israel had, tell Ashton I need his help. The first king Israel had was King Saul. Somebody say Saul. Saul was a king that came as a result, not because God wanted him, but because the people asked for him. Here's what you got to be careful. Watch me. Because they saw all of these other groups of people who had kings that were men kings and they said we want what they have I'm really trying to help somebody I really am he, they said we want what they have but they didn't realize they had a king that was better than what they had because even though at the time he was not a man they had a God who was at the, on the elevated seat called the throne in their lives. Watch it. Here's why you got to be careful. Because the Bible says they wanted to switch the seats of the throne of their life. And they said, God, we know you say that you are our king, but we can't touch you. We can't feel you. We can't see you. We want a man king. Are y'all with me in here? And before you judge Israel, you many of us are not much different than them. Because even though God is desiring to sit on the throne of their life, you must know that many of us flip it and really want somebody we can see. We want somebody we can touch. We want somebody we can pick up the phone and dial their number. We want somebody who cannot even do all that God can do in our life because we have fallen out of touch with who the real king in our life is. Come on. And this is why we make our husbands kings. Yeah, come on, you my king. All right, that, that, okay, keep it in its perspective, but be careful with that. Y'all talking back to me in here. We make bishops and pastors kings. And we make bosses our king. We put everybody in these elevated seats in our lives because we don't have enough faith to trust in the king of kings. 
and the Lord of Lords. I know, I know, it's tight. Y'all not now, y'all in them phones, like, looking down, trying to act like you taking no. You ain't taking no notes. You better let this word cut you wherever way it cuts you, because many of us have traded in the King of Kings, and we have accepted lesser beings to sit on the throne of our lives. And so it is God gives them Saul after he rebukes Samuel because Samuel is upset with them because he has been the prophet in Israel. He has been the voice of God in Israel and God has to remind Samuel, listen to me, as invested as you are in these people, they are not your people. Oh, come on, come close. As much as you have tried to speak what I told you to speak, they don't belong to you, they belong to me. Here's where you got to be careful because not only can you put people in elevated seats you can't allow people to put you in an elevated seat because God is a jealous God he will not have anybody beside him and nobody belongs at his side besides his son who is seated at the right hand of the father there is nobody that belongs in the same arena as it relates to who sits on the throne of your life. He tells Samuel, Samuel, I am their God. And when they called for a king, they did not insult you. They insulted me. Are y'all with me in here? And you begin to see where God gives them Saul. He has now Saul starts this uh, beginning of kings in Israel. Stay with me. Y'all want to learn something about kings this morning. And there were good kings in Israel. Saul was not a good king. He started off okay. But then the Bible lets us know he never went for God's presence. The Ark of the Covenant. One time in 2 Samuel chapter 14, I believe it was, uh, when Jonathan came through the woods and ate the honey. But it was for selfish purposes is because Saul was trying to win a battle. You got to be careful only calling on God when you need him. He's not your genie in the bottle. I'm just preaching. I'm just trying to navigate through this. He is not your genie. You, he wants relationship. God is not interested in your one night stand so you can get your rocks off, get what you need, and then you don't call on him no more. God says, I want relationship. Saul was not interested in a relationship with God. Saul got the Ark of the Covenant so he could win a battle. Uh, that's another message for another time. After Saul, God begins to raise up other kings. Uh, we're going to skip David for a minute, but there were good kings. Jotham was a good king. Jehoshaphat was a good king. Hezekiah was a good king. They're in no certain order, but there was a king that came in that changed the game for Israel. Y'all with me? Just stay with me. This is why you got to be careful putting men on elevated seats in your life. <clears throat> there was a king named Jeroboam. Jeroboam, again, in no certain order, he started off good as most of them do. He started off good, but because he's not God, you always have to be careful with men in elevated seats in your life. Don't you know that most major mass murderers started off real good? Y'all remember Hitler started off saying he wanted to serve the people. Even gave them a car and put a car on the street called a Volkswagen that many of y'all broke y'all neck to go get one. It, it's, it means the people's car but they didn't know he was setting them up to kill millions of them y'all talking back to me Jeroboam walked first of all with the Lord and then flipped and put Israel into idolatry the reason why Jeroboam is a key king is because after him every evil king read the Bible it says and they walked in the ways of Jeroboam Yes, whenever a king started to lead God's people away, they would tag that king and say he walked 
in the ways of Jeroboam. Watch it. Now the glory is no longer on King Jesus. Or the glory is no longer on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now the glory is being given to this man who has led Israel astray. Could you do me a favor for the first time this morning? Because I feel like the fact that we're in school is boring y'all. So I need to wake y'all up. Help me preach. Tell somebody next to you. Tell them, neighbor, you have to be careful. Come on. Tell them, you have to be careful putting men in elevated seats in your life because as I started this message know that there will always be a battle over thrones in your life if the devil can get somebody or something in an elevated seat in your life beyond God then he's got you right where he wants you. Can I get somebody in here like me that has ever made the mistake of elevating something beyond God? I'll lift my hand first because y'all being real funny acting in church. Y'all don't want to admit it, but I had to realize that the battle in my life is over who is going to sit on the throne. And God, nobody can have his throne in heavenly places. But the thing about God you must understand is he lets you choose who will sit on the throne of your life. God is a gentleman. If you want to give other people that seat, he'll back up and let you let somebody else sit down. But it's a dangerous place to be in when God backs up off the throne in your life. Can I get a witness in here? You must understand that this is a beginning of time issue. Now I want to talk to you because many of you have already disqualified yourself. Oh, Bishop preaching good. He's sure talking good to them. You know how we do in church. Oh, she so, she so needed to hear this. Oh, he preaching right to him because that's his problem. But the devil is a lie. All of us have had this issue this this is a human problem yes it's not gender bias it is not class bias this is a battle that we feel or face every day it goes all the way back to Genesis God said I'm your God I am your king I made you the devil slides his slithering at that time he was walking he walks his nasty self up to Eve and tries to convince Eve you don't have to have God on the throne of your life you can sit on your own throne y'all gonna talk to me did God tell you you can't eat of that tree yeah he told us that he said that he just knows that the day you eat of that tree you're going to be just like him uh oh now he's trying to pull you into his problem I'm trying to preach but I'm boring y'all I can see it on your faces it's fine I'll be out of your hair in just a minute his problem was he wanted to be like God and all he does is whisper in your ear and try to get you to believe you can be like God you can do what God can do the devil is a lie the only thing that only way I can do what God can do is through him I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me but if God is not on the throne of my life then I can't do nothing by myself Adam and Eve wanted to create their own throne to sit on they wanted the elevated seat in their lives and it's a dangerous place to be in when you want the elevated seat. I came ready for y'all this morning because this message is not laced 
least <laughs> with a lot of you gonna get God's about to do it 30 days jump up shout and turn around but if you receive it it'll help you get to that place in the next few days <laughs> because for some of us we gotta kick off the throne who's sitting there and we gotta put God back on the throne I, I come to tell you that this whole thing watch it is going to boil down to thrones because even when you read the book of revelation the throne is so important to God that he says when I come down to earth I'm bringing the whole throne room with me y'all don't want to have no church in the new Jerusalem John said I looked up and the holy city was falling out of the air it came down to earth God and his throne look at somebody and say it all boils down to thrones it all boils down to who's in control it all boils down to who has authority it all boils down to who I'm submitted to it all boils down to who I give the elevated seat to let me put it this way when God is on the throne of my life I don't worry about nothing because God has the final say I wish I had somebody you don't like what's going on in my life take it up with the king you don't like how he's blessing me take it up with the king any sickness hits my body I'm going to the king anything disturbs my mind I'm going to the king I'm scared for some of y'all because you kicked him off the throne in your life you can never kick him off his heavenly throne but you didn't put him in the elevated seat you go to him now you gotta go consult with some negro that ain't got the power to heal you why you coming to God now you put somebody else on the throne but look at somebody in the eyeball and tell them neighbor God has my elevated seat God has the throne in my life is in control of it all. He's in control. Look at somebody and say, let God handle it. Let God handle it. Let the king work it out. Let the king work it out. Here comes David because God has always dealt with thrones. He has always dealt with kings and kingdoms. Here comes David. Here it is. Come stay with me for a minute. Where David, the Bible says, is a man after God's own heart. I need you to understand something God was always going to give them a man king but they wanted it outside of their time they wanted it for themselves and their heart was not in the right place you have to be careful not trusting God enough to let him have total control of your life God's problem was that he was preparing David for them because all of this, hear me, was a presentation of Jesus. Are y'all with me in here? It was a presentation of Jesus. Stay with me, please. I know, I know, I know, I know y'all bored, but I don't know how to be nobody but myself. I got to give y'all what God gave me. Next, the next preacher that comes, the next pastor y'all get in the next generation, maybe he'll dummy it all the way down, water it all the way down. But for now, you gonna get what I got. He, 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 listen, listen to me, listen. The reason why David was not given to them first was because God wasn't ready to give them David and David wasn't ready to be their king. Watch me. This was a presentation of Jesus. Jesus was prophet. Somebody say prophet. 
he was priest somebody say priest and he was king somebody say king come on say it he was prophet he was priest and he was their king you must understand the weight of the assignment that was on David's life David's assignment and the weight of his call was very key to what God used him to do. You can see this by how you study David. David, when God gave him the kingship, watch it, he didn't give him the whole kingdom. I'm trying. I really am trying. I just... <laughs> I said when David was given the kingship, he was not given the whole kingdom because some of us don't trust God enough to know that he knows how much to give us and you're frustrated because he has not given you watch this everything he promised you all at once okay here is the part where I care no longer about what how y'all respond because I'm no longer preaching to you I'm preaching to me all right you got to trust God enough to know that God knows what you can handle and when you can handle it you can't say God is king and then tell him how to be king you can't say God is in control and then want to take partial control yourself God said David you are a king but I'm not going to give you this whole kingdom Come on, you a preacher. What does God give him first? First, God gives him the two northern kingdoms, southern kingdoms. He gives him Judah and he gives him Benjamin. Those two tribes are the first tribes God gives David to prepare him to be king over the full 12 y'all missed it so I'm going to say it again David has a weight on his life he's going to be a king God says you're ready for kingship but you're not ready for the whole kingdom yes and this is a message for you the reason God keeps piecing off the vision and giving it to you is because you're ready for kingship but you're not ready for the kingdom God says I got to give you what you can handle when you can handle it and most of what he's giving you is a test for you yes if you can't handle Judah and Benjamin then you're not ready for the full 12 tribes yet Judah whose name first means now will I praise the Lord we always take the easy way out when describing Judah and say Judah's name means praise but John that is not full meaning of Judah's name. Judah's name means now will I praise the Lord. In other words, I want to wait until I'm no longer hurting to praise him. But Leah finally got it. After her husband rejected her, time after time, she woke up and said, I ain't waiting on this Negro to accept me. I spent all of these babies and all of these years waiting on him to accept me forget this joker now I'm getting ready to praise the Lord you ain't ready for elevation until you have learned how to praise God through your pain if you're waiting on things to get better you ain't ready for the kingdom baby because real kings and queens know how to give God praise in the face of witches, in the face of warlocks, in the face of demons, in the face of warfare, in the face of trials and tribulations. I'm not waiting till it's over. I'm not waiting till it gets easier. Now! 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 I don't know if I'll get tomorrow. Now! Somebody shout now! Somebody shout now! 
You don't have to tell nobody. You're ready for promotion. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> You're ready for promotion. <laughs> because you don't wait till the battle is over. You don't wait <laughs> until everything is in your favor. <laughs> you don't wait <laughs> until things line up the way you want them to. <laughs> you stop poking your lip out. <laughs> You stop getting down. You stop making excuses and say, God has been too good. He's been too good. And until you learn how to function in Judah, you're not ready for the 12. He gives him Judah first to prove that he is ready for the kingdom. And then he gives him Benjamin, which Benjamin's name means son of the right hand. And the right hand of God is the authoritative place of God. Watch it. It is the place where Jesus is seated next to his father in the throne room. Oh my God, I'm really trying to help you. I'm really trying to help you. Because when you get Benjamin, it means you have a clear revelation of throne room activities. It means you know the hierarchy of the throne room of God. That the throne is for the son. I'm sorry, for the king. And at the right hand of the father is the son, Jesus. Until you learn how to put the king in his proper place, you're not ready for all 12 tribes. Here's... Here's the transformation. Because Benjamin is a revelation that is so heavy that if you get it, God says, I can release the other 12 or the other 10 to you. Watch it. Because God sits on the throne as the king. And the part of himself, <laughs> hear me, the part of himself that is the son sits on the right hand. Do me a favor, can you come get this chair and sit it here? Can you take your smaller chair and sit it here? Right here. Until you understand this, which this is Benjamin, you're not ready for elevation because God says there are too many people in position that don't understand Benjamin. And so thrones are off balance in our lives. Come, I won't sit on the throne because y'all make me go viral and say I think I'm God. Sit on the right hand, would you please? You get to be God today. You got the God beard. Here's what happens. God sits on the throne. The part of himself that is the son is seated at his right hand. But they are really one. You hear me? When Jesus died on the cross, when he sent the part of himself that was the son to go die on the cross, just stand over there, you're dying on the cross. The Bible says in Colossians, that he defeated the powers of the enemy, watch it, and made an open spectacle of them. Because in battle, what happens when is when you beat another general, you strip him of his stripes in front of the whole army. And so when he defeated Satan, Jesus made him take off his stripes in front of everybody. Here it is. In custom times, what would happen is when the son 
who was a knight would come back and win the battle, the king himself would get up and give the seat to the one that won the battle. Y'all don't want to have church in here. When Jesus went and died on the cross and won the battle for us, Lord have mercy, that is when God says you can be seated because you are now the king of kings. I wish I had somebody. And you are the Lord of lords. <laughs> So while the devil keeps telling you that you are defeated, you need to understand the revelation of Benjamin, that Jesus went from seated to at the right hand of the Father to now being seated on the throne. And when you know who is on the throne, there is no devil in hell that can stop you. Can I tell you this morning why the devil is mad at you? He's always mad at those who know who is on the throne. He wants to know, Mother Loretta, why can't I get into her mind? Her husband just died, but she keeps on serving me. Her husband just died. But she was at other funerals uh, while she was mourning herself. Uh, it's because she knows. Who's seated on the throne? Look at somebody uh, and tell them, neighbor, uh, I refuse uh, to freak out in this scene. Uh, come on, tell them. Uh, Say, neighbor, I refuse to lose my mind. Tell them, say, neighbor, y'all ain't doing it. Help me preach. My children can act up, but I know who's on the throne. Tell somebody, help me preach it. Say, neighbor, my blood pressure may be a little high. But I know I know Who's on the throne Neighbor My marriage Is hanging on By a thread But I ain't worried 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 I know Tell somebody I know who's on the throne Come on tell them I know who's on the throne I know who has the throne of my life I know who has the authority Get out of your seat and go prophesy to three people. Come on, tell them don't freak out. Tell them don't freak out. Come on, go touch three people. Just tell them don't freak out. He's still on the throne. He, yes. He's still on the phone. He's still. He's still. He's still. He's still. He's still. He's still on the throne. Point to him and tell him, watch him work it out. Watch him work it out. He don't have to take a vote. He don't need to pass a law. He don't need Congress to approve it. He don't have to ask your baby daddy. He don't have to ask nobody's permission. He's about to bless you. 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 He's a committee of one. He decided before the foundation. I'm going to bless you. Teach your children. He's on the throne. Teach your children. He's on the throne. Go home. Hug your husband. Hug your wife. Hug your mama. Hug your daddy. And tell them whatever was wrong. Let's put it behind us. 
when they look at you funny and say what's wrong with you ain't nothing wrong I just remembered who's on the throne he has the final say he is the one that flung the stars in the sky he is the one that hung the moon 92 million miles away close enough for us not to freeze far enough for us not to burn up who wouldn't serve who wouldn't serve who wouldn't serve who wouldn't serve a God like this I'm good a God like this a God like this a God like this a God like this got you through COVID and you're still alive still got a job still got a house still got a car here's the most important part still got your mind who wouldn't serve I knew I wasn't gonna finish who wouldn't serve who wouldn't serve who wouldn't serve, who wouldn't serve? the next time you don't feel right in your body before you run grab your phone and say call the doctor the first thing you better do is say take me to the king cause the king can work it out the king will know what to do when you call the king he'll go and start talking to the doctor and say I got somebody on their way to your office when she get here here's what you prescribe and the only reason I'm letting her go through this is she can know I am God I am I'm still a healer I'm still a deliverer I'm still a way maker I'm still a rock in a weary land I'm still bread in a starving land I'm still shelter in the time of a storm I'm still her lily in the valley I'm still the bright and morning star I'm still the wheel in the middle of a wheel I'm still your bridge over troubled waters I'm still your rose in Sharon I'm still the stone that the builders rejected somebody open your mouth and say the name of the one that's on the throne somebody shout Jesus uh oh, we get ready to get in trouble. Thank you, Pastor Owens. The more I call him, the better I feel. Somebody shout Jesus, yell Jesus, holler Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday Jesus when the sun goes down Jesus we gotta go I gotta go preach for Albert Simmons at 6 30 but before I leave do me one more favor for the last time I 
promise you find somebody find somebody don't leave me by myself and put your arm around them and pull them real close come on find somebody put your arm around them pull them real close tell them neighbor I want to give you something that'll last you throughout this week and the weeks to come tell them neighbor trouble is going to come come on say neighbor trials are going to come but tell them neighbor I got good news always oh always remember who's on the throne Jesus is in control I feel the power of the king in the room open your mouth lift your hands and give him glory Jesus, when troubles burden me down, Jesus, I know your love's all around, Jesus, oh, that's my king, open your mouth and give the king glory, that's the only way I survived my divorce it was Jesus that's the only way I survived my abuse Jesus it's how I got off drugs it's how I came out of my depression it's how I got free it's how I got loose somebody call his name Somebody call his name. I said, call his name. I said, call his name. Jesus. Jesus is his name. Every, every day the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Jesus, 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 Jesus is his name. For those of you who are theologians, I know I didn't quite get to the text yet, but we will next week. Stand to your feet all over this building. God is looking, lift your hands, to return to the throne of your life. He wants to be in the elevated seat in your mind, in your heart, in your family, in everything you do. And some of you are saying, Lord, I've been wrong. I need to return you there. 
This is not to shame you. So somebody's going to have to be courageous and break the ice. But I want to pray for every person who is looking for the king to return back to the throne of your life. If that is you, I want you to come down to this altar with your hands lifted. And we want to pray for you. Come. Come. I know good and well, pride is not getting ready to take over this room. You can swallow all of that pride. Thank you for breaking the ice, son. Lift your hands. But there's a lot of people that need to be behind you. To making God. Thank you, Jacob. The center focus of all that you do. That's it. They're coming. Here they come. Come, come, come. Some of you, for whatever reason, think you have God on the elevated seat, but you do not. And that is the problem. God is looking for more. The Bible says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Because he's the king. Consult him about everything. And what's he going to do? He will direct your path. Because he's the king. He sits on the throne. Come with your hands lifted. Don't look at me. Come with your hands lifted. That's it. We're not looking around the room. We're not. That's it. We're not looking around the room. We're not looking. That's it. That's it. Come. Come. Thank you, Sister Tanja. Thank you, Prophetess. Come on. Come on. There's a few more. We're waiting. We're waiting. God is moving on your heart. That's it. That's it. We're not here to shame anybody. We want the king to take his That's it. Come. 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 That's it. Come on. That's it. That's it. We're waiting. We're waiting. Those of you who are already down here, let's start talking to God. Let him deal with you. That's it. Let him talk to you. Lift your hands. We're open. We're open. We're open. We're open. We're open to you now, God. We're open. We're open. That's it. We're open. We come on. Oh, yes. Yes, I repent, God. My first reaction has been natural. But God, I return you back to the throne in my life. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the honor. That's it. There's about five more of y'all that need to come. I'm going to give y'all about 60 seconds. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's two. That's good. That's it. Hey, we, we just want God to return back to his place. He's got to be the single most important thing in my life. I want to return God back to his throne. Nothing is more important than God being an absolute rule and absolute authority. If you had God as king in your life, you wouldn't react in some of the ways you react. And I know I didn't really get ready to get a chance to drill down, but this was too meaty for one message. We just starting, we just scratching the surface. Just, just deal with the part that I need God sitting on the throne of my life. That's it. That's it. Come with your hands lifted. Father, we thank you for those who have come as you lift your hands, lift them high and surrender to you. Some of them subconsciously, some of them because they were upset or mad or just slipped and slid back a little bit. But God, they're here and surrender to your word. And because they're surrendering to your word, they're surrendering to you. I pray now, God, that you would replace what has been sitting on the throne in their lives that as we lay our crowns down as we lay our crowns down we submit to your will and your authority in the mighty name of Jesus God we put you back in your place everybody at this altar I want you to begin to open your mouth 
And I want you to begin to cry out to God. Let him know that he's going back into his place. He's going, that's it. It can't take a shot. Those of you who didn't come to the altar, don't be quiet. Because I don't know if you're examining yourself all the way you need to. Just in case, I would open my mouth. And I would tell God, I need you to be, hey, I need you to be back in your place. Back in your place. Back, I'm resting in you. I can sleep while the storm is raging. Because I got a king watching over me. I got a king. I got a king. I got a king. The Bible says his, his eyes go to and fro throughout the earth. And we're watching, he's watching, he's watching, he's watching, he's watching, he's watching, he's watching. That's it. Hallelujah. Open your mouth. That's it. Open your mouth. That's it. Out of your own belly. That's it. Before I lay hands on anybody, it got to come out of your belly. I, I, I'm, I'm not putting myself in that place. God is on that seat. That's it. God is on that seat. Let them talk to you. Let them minister to you. Let them minister to you. Let them mi hey, shetan on them on your side. Just a few more minutes. Out of your belly. 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 Oh, that's it, that's it, King. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Come on. Take your place. Come on. Take your place. That's it. Come on. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Come on. That's your request to God now. Ask him, take your place. 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 Come on, that's your prayer. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Those of you watching online, ask God, lift your hand. Take your place. One more time, lift your hands as you ask him to take his place. Hey, take your place in my heart, in my mind. And Father, we give you the glory and we give you the honor and we thank you now. Come bring them. We thank you now for you honoring the request of these your people. We thank you now that you said blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Those of you in your seats, can you give God praise for these who had the courage to come down to the altar? Those of you here at this altar, as you go back to your seat, I want you to remember the decree you made with God today that he is sealing you that he is sealing you I said that he is sealing you that he is sealing you I need somebody to give God praise for sealing he is sealing you now you're going to be tested this week some of you who are watching me online, I want to hear your testimonies. Those of you in the sanctuary, I want to hear your testimony. Not all of you can text me. I want you to, you can post and you can tag me in it. I just want to hear because God said, I'm going to show you this week. And over the course of these messages, we'll be right back here in Psalm 24 next Sunday. That I am the king in your life. And I sit on the throne in your life. If you will allow me, if you will allow me, I will come 
and I will take my seat in your life. I need somebody in this room to look up to heaven and say, God, be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated. There may be somebody here who doesn't know the Lord in the pardon of their sins. There may be somebody here who does not know God in the pardon of their sins. If you're here and you don't know him and you want to give him your life, maybe you are watching online and you don't know God in the pardon of your sins. Come. 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 If you're just looking for a place to worship and you're in the sanctuary or you're watching us online, you're looking for a place to worship, come now. Come now. Come now. If you're watching us online, type it. Type it in the screen, in the comments, and somebody will send you a link where we can get your information and we can reach out to you expeditiously. Come. Let's thank God for a saved house. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done. In just a minute, I'm going to ask Pastor Kewin to come and he's going to give our appeal for our offering. Come. Pastor. Let's receive him as he comes. Hey Amen. Can we give God a praise for our bishop? Hallelujah. Wasn't that a fantastic word? Amen. Hey man, I'm going to be coming, just reading a, a scripture and giving our offering. Uh, Malachi 3 and 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what you have robbed me, rob you, in tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storeroom, that there be, may be food in my house. And try me in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I would not open for you a window of heaven and pour you out such a blessing. There will not be room enough to receive it. Um, I just want to encourage every last one of you, give your tithes and your offering. This is how, this is a principle of God. This is a, this is a principle. God cannot lie. If you give, he will give back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Will he have, will he have, will he put into you? So we want everyone to give, give. If you have an income coming in, give 10% and give your offering. This is how you be blessed. I was always taught you have to give your way out of poverty. You have to give your way out of circumstances. I never forget how when I was in the meal, I just got hired in the meal and I was living with my parents and I had Junior on the way and I had I uh, was married with my, 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 my wife. I just got evicted out of my apartment. And I remember um, my uncle was lifting an offering for my father at his appreciation service. And he said, God told me to give $500. And I just got hired in the meal, and I still had $1,000 of speeding tickets I had to pay. So <laughs> I remember God said, give it. And I, I remember giving it. And I remember the next week, I got fired from the meal. And I remember saying, Petitioning God, God, you just told me to give this money, and now you abandoned me. That's how I felt. I was so depressed. I was, but God was really opening the door for me to get to where I am today. I make, I'm not going to tell you how much I make, but I make double as amount as money I would have been making in the middle. All because I obeyed what God told me to do. Listen, there's a principle in giving. When you give, God will give back to you. He will. I'm a living witness. Amen. Let's give God praise for Pastor Kiwan. Listen, here's the issue in Malachi. 
and we're getting ready to give. Those of you watching online, prepare yourselves. You should be able to see the ways to give. The issue in Malachi, uh, Mother Glover, is that it's not even that they weren't giving anything. It was that they were giving God their leftovers. Yeah. So they would take to the market these lambs and all of these animals, and instead of giving God their best, Sister Russell, they would give God the crippled little lambs that they couldn't even get no money for in the market. And so they were just throwing God anything when God was the reason they had everything that they had. And so it's not just about not giving anything. It's about don't give God what you got left. You wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for him. Always give God your best. I'm going to say this before we give, and I thought the flyer would be ready today, but it's going to be ready soon. Those six leaders that went to that meeting with me, where are y'all? Stand up. One, two, it was here. Uh, lady, it was, who else? Uh, uh, Deacon, Deacon Liz already raised it. It was Grayson was with me, and it was Kim, and then Alan was there by phone, and Pastor Owens. Those six leaders went to a meeting with me with Pastor Bruce Hayes, and we released at that time, during my anniversary in March, the Lord spoke to me and said that we have to pay this church off. <laughs> Y'all looking like, what's the catch? There ain't no catch, we're gonna pay this church off. Amen. Hear me, before I tell you what I need you to do, it was so supernatural that those that showed up to that meeting, Pastor Bruce Hayes started sowing into their lives. He starts sowing $200 into each person that came there. And the Lord said, you got to pay this church off. And Pastor Bruce Hazen, the, those seven, if you include Alan, people, eight if you include Lady, those seven people that were in the meeting with me were witnesses to the fact that he has already started to sow into us paying this church off. I spoke to him to, the other day, hear me. He is gathering thousands of dollars within his own church. He passes a church on the west side of Chicago. Now, I already know what y'all thinking. Well, what, why would he do that? What does he get out of it? Nothing. That's a kingdom mindset. We don't understand it because our mind is, is, is still a restricted, and I don't mean to insult anybody, so if the shoe don't fit, don't wear it. But our mindset is still a restricted local I go to such and such Baptist church mentality. A kingdom mindset is, number one, I do what the king tells me to do. He said the Lord told him to help us pay our church off. Now, to be honest with you, if there's any benefit for him, he is an investor in this neighborhood. He just bought a house right here. He's buy, buying some other houses and properties. Uh, so to, for us to pay off our building, that's a blessing for us. We're going to pay this building off in March. We've already got people outside of our church that are already committed to doing it. Here's what I'm going to ask you for. Before anything, before we worry about anything as it relates to my anniversary, that's going to take care of itself. By March, we're ne we need 200 people to commit to sowing $1,000. All right? Now, within our church, the first $2,000 pledge is coming from me. I'm going to make sure we have ours, right? But we need as many of you all that will. You're not go it's not going away. Every Sunday, we will come up with and, and announce those that will sow $1,000 between now and March. Here's what I know about God. I've been walking with him too long, Mother Gun, to know that if you want to sow, you will have $1,000 between now and March. If you want to do it, you will do it. This benefits me in no way other than the fact that we got to pay this building off. We've had this mortgage way too long. And we've seen God do some supernatural stuff. When I got here, it was almost $2 million, Paul. That was what we were paying in mortgage, $2 million. We got it down, thanks to Dr. Smith's help, we got it down to $400,000. Right? And then we got it from there when they tried to act like we was about to lose this church. We got it from there down to less than $200,000. We need 200 people to sow $1,000 and in March this will not be a problem. We will have a paid off church. 
and we will burn this mortgage. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all hearing me? Here's what I will say, and I'm going to leave it alone. If you have anything negative to say, keep it to yourself. That's not me saying that as a pastor. That's me trying to help you. Because if you start talking against what God has already put in motion, you put yourself in danger. Because no weapon, come on Bible readers, formed against us, come on Bible readers, what's what the Bible says, shall what? Be able to prosper, but keep reading, and every tongue, come on, all right, so watch your tongue. Look at somebody next to you and tell them, watch your tongue. All right, so we, we're, we're excited about that. God's going to bless us tremendously. Come on, Deacon Liz, we're ready. We're going to ask Deacon Dr. Smith to come and, and hold the basket. Going to ask that you would stand, play something for us, because now they mad at me just a little bit, but they'll be all right. Come on, Ty. Y'all play something for us, because God's going to help us burn his mortgage off in March. And when it's burned off, you're going to come back to this Sunday. Amen. The third Sunday in October, and say, Bishop told us this mortgage was going to be burned. We're going to burn this thing up. Amen. We're going to burn it up. All right. Start from the rear. If you will come down, stand up. Come on, saints. Stand up. Face the outer walls and start bringing your offering around starting from the rear. If you're swiping, that's going to be to my left, your right. If you're giving with the app, just still walk around and smile at me so we can see your beautiful face. Amen. You can give by way of Cash App. You can give by the way of New Hope App. You can text to give. Wait a minute, hold on. Bring it down a little bit. Hey, we got something new up here too, y'all. I keep forgetting to tell y'all. You can put your cell phone, if it'll work, and just put your camera. You know how y'all do when y'all go to the restaurants and scan the menu? A QR code. Thank you, Pastor Keevan. Uh You can scan the QR code with your camera, and the Cash App will actually pop up for you. All right, it'll all pop up for you. Thank you so much. Y'all sound good. Keep, keep going. Thank you. God bless you. Thank God for our ushers that have on their pink for breast cancer awareness month. And we didn't do a Sunday this year, so I'm gonna ask just impromptu. It's usually the fourth Sunday, right? Uh, next Sunday, if you all will wear your pink if you got it for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Next Sunday, so ushers, y'all put it back on, clean it, or whatever you gotta do, and let's put it back on. Every, next Sunday, we're all going to wear pink for Breast Cancer Awareness, and uh, to those of you who are survivors of breast cancer, we are thankful to you, which uh, Sister Nisi, I know is one, we're also praying for her because she fell earlier this week, and I believe she broke um, her leg or something like that. So we're praying for her. She's okay, but and I spoke with her this morning, but we're, we're praying for her. We want to make sure we keep her lifted up. She keeps pressing her way to get to church, and I know she's down a little bit. So if you have her information, reach out to her. Just lift her spirit. It could have been a lot worse, so she's okay, but we want to keep her lifted up. Amen. Did everybody have a chance to give? All right, let's stand. We're going home on this. How many of you know God is worthy to be praised? Keep going. I said he's worthy to be praised. Tell somebody he is worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you for the word. You are seated on the throne of our lives. As we leave this place, God, we leave here with a praise on our lips. Demonstrate your power to your people on today, Father God, and show them that as their king, you will provide, you will meet the need, you will do everything that they need you to do in the mighty name of Jesus as long as they submit themselves to you. As we leave here, we put you on the elevated seat. We put you in the elevated throne. We sit you, Father God, on the throne of our lives. We know, Father, that nobody else could unseat you from your heavenly throne. But we welcome you onto the elevated seat of our lives. And we put you in authority and control. We submit to your will. We lay down our crowns and we submit to you in the mighty name of Jesus. As this week goes out, Father, we say one thing to you. 
be the king of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, may it rule, may it abide with us both now and forever. Let every heart say amen. And we will see you all Tuesday night.